All right, so for this problem, we're asked to approximate the area underneath the curve given by the function f of x equals x squared plus 1. Um, we're asked to approximate it using the left endpoints of six subintervals, and we're asked to do that from x equals negative 1 to x equals 2, so from negative 1 to 2. We're asked to, to do six subintervals, so this here has a distance of three. So when we split that up into six interval, uh, six equal intervals, each of those intervals is going to have a width of one half. So we can actually split these up here. So it goes from negative one to negative one half to zero to one half to one, one and a half, and then two. So we have our six equal uh, partitions here. Alrighty then. So in order to in order to figure out the area or approximate the area, we are doing it by uh, by a Riemann sum. Um, and what that does is basically adds up all the areas of some rectangles the underneath there. Um, and it asks us, asks us to use the left endpoints, which means that the rectangles that we're drawing are going to be um, drawn up to the graph from the left-hand side. And what I mean by this is this. So we have one rectangle here. This is the base of that rectangle. The left-hand side is going to go up and stop at the function, and then we're going to create a rectangle there. Then the next rectangle here is going to go up on the left-hand side, stop at the function, and then we're going to create that rectangle there. And we're going to keep doing that using the left-hand side of each of these rectangles. This goes about up there. This is a little messy, but that's right. You get the idea. And these are our six rectangles here that we're going to add up. So we're going to add these up in order to get our approximation. All right, so this is something, of course, called the Riemann sum, as I mentioned before. When we write it out more formally, we can write it this way. Now, the way you write it depends on how you look at this. Um, a lot of times, sometimes you'll see this, this change in x. This is if you're doing the um, you're doing equal you know, widths for each of these uh, rectangles. Since we are, we can keep it this way, or you can write, you know, the the right-hand side where the x equals on the right-hand side minus the, what x equals on the left-hand side, but we're gonna keep it this way for now. In this case, this f of ci depends on where you, where the height of the rectangle is, right? Well, since we're using the left-hand side, we're going to use all the values that are on the left-hand sides of these rectangles. And in this case, if we're doing C, so if we're looking at that, we can make this set CI since all the left-hand side values. So this starts at negative one, and then they go up by half, uh, all the way up to six times. So that's zero, and then one half, and then uh, one and then three halves and that's there that's three halves right there and that's the last one there because uh we we can't do two because that's on the right hand side so we have these six values there so then all we have to do is find what the value of the function is with all of these inputs here because that what that's going to do is give us these lengths on the left hand sides of these rectangles and then so when we multiply that by the base here, which our base is given as one half, then we're going to get this times one half times one half there. And then we add up all those values, that's gonna give us our approximation. So go one by one. So let's see, I'm gonna see C1, which is the first one here. When we plug that into our function up here, that's gonna give us two. And then if we plug in negative um, one half into that function, it's going to give us five fourths. And we keep going uh, to the next one here, and that's going to give us one. And uh, let's see, that's the third one. We're going to do the fourth one here, which is one half, which is also going to give us five fourths. Fifth one, we plug in one, it's going to give us two. And then last, C6 which is that one there, where we plug that in, we are going to get, let's see, I think it's 13 over four, if I'm not mistaken. 13 over four, uh, do, 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 is that right? I believe it is, yes. Alrighty then, so 
<clears throat> these are the values here for CI. Now we have to multiply each of those by one half. And when we do that, we get one. And uh, this is, once we do that, we're gonna have our, each of those values, we're gonna add each of those up. So we have one and then half times that is five over eight. Uh, half times that is one half and then five over eight and then one and then 13 over eight. When you add all these up, um, of course you can, you know, do like terms, et cetera, et cetera. We get 43 over eight there. Uh, this is, you can obviously divide this with a calculator and get some value, which is, you know, whatever that value is. Um, of course, you can kind of see if you're close by doing the integral from here from negative uh, one to two of x squared plus one dx, um, and then evaluate this, um, <clears throat> you know, at negative one and two. And then the answer here, compare it to this to see if it's around that answer. It should be somewhat close to kind of verify that. All right, so that should take care of it. Good luck.